All right, welcome back. In the last video, we set up our coins and the coin counting logic. I am going to continue on this uh, HUD display. And I'm going to lock our objects layer from the last video. And I'm going to unlock the HUD layer. And our coins is on our HUD layer. And I am just going to right click on our coins text object and pick clone object type. And I put that right next to it. Then I am going to change the name to txt underscore HUD time. And because we cloned it, everything stays the same except for the actual text, which I'm going to replace with time. And doing this is just a placeholder for us to see it up here. All right, we got that set up. And while we are here, I'm going to close that up and I'm going to move our uh, text objects into our text folder. And our coin sparkle, I'm going to move that into our particles folder because I just feel like it acts like a particle. Let's head on over to the main event sheet and I'm going to close up the coin count. And I'm going to right click, add a new group, and I'm going to call this time count. So for the time count, let's add a, a, an event, go to system, and let's choose our every tick. So every tick, which is every frame that the game is playing, which is 60 frames per second, I want it to start counting. Now I'm not going to make this count in seconds. I'm going to make our own little counting system. It's going to count much faster. So it's not going to look like actual time. It's going to look like more like a score. And to do that, I'm going to need a variable to hold the time that has passed. So let's go to our global variables. Let's right click, add global variable. I'm going to call this total time. All right. And back in our main, I'm going to add an action to our every tick. I'm going to say system, add, add to uh, total time, and I'm going to add 0 0.1 seconds every tick of the game. So it's going to count pretty quick. I need to tell our text object what to read. So let's add an action, go find our, our text HUD time, and I'm going to set text. And in our quotation marks, I'm going to type in time in all caps, semicolon, space, because that's the text I want to appear. And then after that last quotation mark, uh, ampersand, and I want to read the total time variable. All right, so let's play that. So you can see this is what's happening up here. Uh, two things. One. It started counting before we even started playing, right? We have our little intro with our flashing words and our fades. And then when I die, it's still counting. It's flickering and going crazy. And then once we're dead, it's still counting and it is freaking out right now. Uh, I think that's because the text box is too small. But uh, we're going to change all that. First off, I don't want it to read with a decimal point. So let's go back in here and instead of reading the total time at just as the variable as it keeps track of the time, I want to tell it to go in uh, whole numbers instead of decimals. So after the ampersand before the total time variable, I'm going to type in INT stands for integer and then I'm going to put parentheses around the variable. So what this says is we want uh, our text to read time and then we want our variable but we want it in a whole number. Okay, so we can preview that real quick and there it is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Counting really fast but that's what I want. Okay. Whenever we started it, it started counting immediately, and then when we die, it, uh, it continues to count, and we certainly don't want that, so we need to tell it when to count and when not to count, and we're going to do that with yet another variable. So back on our global variables, I'm going to right-click, 
add a global variable and I'm going to say uh, when our player is playing the game that's when we want to count time but not when he's not playing the game so I'm gonna call this is playing and this is gonna be a 0 1 0 or a 1 so back over on main I'm going to make a, a condition that says if is playing is true which will be one then we can run this code but to do that every tick needs to be uh, on its own in this particular setup so I'm going to create our is playing separately so let's add an event to our time count group and say system we want to compare variable and that variable is going to be is playing and if it is equal to one then we're gonna run this code but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this below this and then we're going to make this a sub event of this is playing check so to make this a sub event over here on the far left of our is playing condition I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a blank sub event and then I am just going to move this every tick just highlighted just just the every tick part I'm gonna move it up there into that event and then I'm going to do the same with these I'm just gonna move these up into those action and then we can delete that okay so you see when I click on this it highlights the whole thing because this is a sub event to our is playing check here's what's gonna happen as long as our is playing is one it means we're playing and our every tick is going to keep adding time and that's great but as soon as this turns to zero when we either win the level or we die this is no longer going to be true and it will stop setting the text to the time but we still want the time the text to read what the time is even though it stops so we're going to have to move this text action out of this every tick event but this still needs to be an every tick event so we're gonna to have to create another every tick so let's add an event system every tick and then we can move our text action down here now what this says this does not have uh, anything leading into it it is its own event so as long as the main event sheet is running this is going to read the time variable total time variable every tick of the game whether it's counting or not how do we know if playing is equal to one or not well first off when we start the level we don't want it to start counting so let's initialize in our main initialize main group let's set that variable to zero so add an action system set value of is playing to zero false we are not playing yet and then we will go over to our functions and in our function start level we're going to tell it when to start counting and that is going to be once our player is activated so let's add an action to the bottom here say system set value is playing to one so when it runs through this whole intro to the level after it's done with everything then we're gonna get controls and our guy is gonna start running and then we'll say is playing is true main is gonna say okay I'm gonna start counting and that should work let's play and it's zero still zero and once we start going it starts counting and if we die it keeps counting because we didn't tell it to stop let's go to our controls and in our player death we are going to set is playing to zero so add an action system uh, set value is playing set to zero I want it to stop counting as soon as we die so let's move this up before any weights below there I'm gonna move our player death function down as well this is the order I'm gonna go with in our player death group we'll go invisible uh, spawn the particles change the angle of the particles shake the camera 
Then we'll set is playing to zero, which will stop the timer. Then we'll call the player death function, which will throw his body parts around. Then disable our platform, which will mean that our camera will still be on our uh, invisible player. And then it'll wait two seconds. We'll destroy the camera and the player, and that'll send us into uh, this event. Okay, so that's the order I'm going to go with. That looks good. Let's test it again. And we haven't started counting yet. We are counting once we start running. And when I die, it stops counting at 32. When we reset the level, it is not resetting. I know why. I'm going to go into our functions in our start level function. And in this top part, this very first part of our start level function, I'm going to reset the variable there. The reason is we're going to need the value that's in total time variable in other layouts. When we win the level, we're going to need to know how much time it took because that's going to count towards bonus points, which will be calculated on a different layout. So we need total time to keep that score until we start the next level. When we call this start level function, we'll add an action, say system uh, set value of total time to zero. All right, play test again. Time is zero, coins are zero, and we're counting. We have coins, and then we die. We stop counting, we fade out, everything is set back to zero, and we can start counting again and collecting coins. Okay, perfect. Okay, that is going to be it for the timer. And in the next video, we are going to set up the interface that holds our HUD. It's not going to look like this. Uh, it looks similar, but it'll, <laughs> it'll have some uh, frames and graphics to help it stand out. And it will have some effects that make it slide into, the, into view. And it'll be timed out. Cool little effect to add to the game, and we will cover that in the next video. I will see you then. Don't forget to save.